Welcome to Michelle's Making. Are you ready for coffee, crafts, cooking, and cocktails? Let's get going. Welcome, and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed, shared with family and friends, given this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. I could use the help in building the channel. It is National Museum Selfie Day. So if you have the opportunity to go to a museum today, be sure and take a selfie. Hugging Day. Every day should be Hugging Day because we should demonstrate the affection we have for others. And you never know what someone is struggling with or going through, and sometimes a hug is really what they need that day. And today's the day to do it. It's also Squirrel Appreciation Day, so squirrel. If you appreciate squirrels, do so today. It's time for my coffee, which I have really finished already, but I had French vanilla creamer in my coffee. Let's make it a great one and get going. Today I'm making a hamburger pot pie. I should have called this a ground meat pot pie because I used ground sausage and ground beef. I began by browning and cooking the sausage because it takes a little longer than the beef. I went ahead and cooked that first in my cast iron skillet. Once the sausage was cooked, I added the ground beef and continued to cook until all the pink was gone. With all the convenience foods that we have, Sometimes people are hesitant to cook from scratch because it's a lot more work. But I sometimes use prepared products. Sometimes I start from scratch. Sometimes I use a combination of such. And I say use whatever is easy for you and whatever works for you. There's no shaming from not making everything from scratch. Just cook away to your heart's content. You could start this with sauteing onions and mushrooms in it as well, if that's something that you like. Once the meat was cooked, I moved it off the heat uh, temporarily until I added all my seasonings. And this is a season to taste thing. I use garlic, seasoned salt, uh, throw in a little Worcestershire sauce or any other kind of seasoning that you like. This is where you get to personalize it to your taste or your family's taste. Once you've got the meat seasoned to your taste, you can slide it back on a low heat. Now you can see here the vegetables I've got that I'm using and some of these were leftover vegetables and I actually used canned diced potatoes because I didn't have any pre-cooked and I didn't have any raw that I could cook up but I did have a can back in my pantry so I used that. Next you're going to get some gravy stewing in with that meat and you'll use flour or cornstarch and a very small amount of water first, cold water, stir it up to get all the lumps out and then fill the cup up with water and pour that into your meat. Leaving this on low heat to continue to stew and simmer and it'll thicken up. In fact, mine thickened up quite nicely that I even added another cup of water to give a little more gravy to the mixture. Uh, again, it's a preference. How do you like your pot pies? Do you like them with a lot of gravy in there or do you like them mostly meat and vegetables? Make it however suits your taste. Once you're happy with your gravy, stir in your vegetables and again, whatever's to your taste, whatever kind of vegetables you like or your family likes, throw them in there. And then give it a little taste and see if it's seasoned enough or you wanna add something else. And I decided to add a little bit of Everglades seasoning. I love this seasoning. It really does give a nice flavor. And then of course, garlic. I'm a huge garlic fan. So I added some dry, freeze-dried minced garlic. You can see I added a little water there just to give a little more gravy. So once you're happy with your meat and vegetable mixture, pour that into your pie pan. Now this is a fluted pie pan that comes in really handy for fluting the top of your crust. I'll show you in a minute. And I'm using a prepared pie crust here and rolling it out just to get it a little bit thinner 
because I had this embossed rolling pin. I wanted to try that and see what, what it would look like when you bake a pie. It doesn't look like it's doing very much here. I probably could have pressed it a little bit harder, but as you'll see once it's baked, it does look like the design there. It's there for it. Lift your pie crust onto your pie, and then instead of cutting off the excess pie crust, I rolled it up on itself so the pie crust would have a thicker um, edge to it, and also so when I was crimping it down, it kind of seals to the pie plate and keeps it from shrinking up too much or um, from allowing the filling to boil out too much. I did have a little bit of boil over with mine and so I have learned a while back when making things like this to um, place your pie plate uh, or your casserole dish or whatever it is you're using on a cookie sheet that's been lined with aluminum foil and that way if it does boil over a little bit the mess and cleanup is really easy. So you can see here, I just followed the design of the fluted dish um, when I was crimping the dough. And that made a perfect, nice little pie crust. When you have a filled pie that you're baking, you want to put some vent holes in the top crust so that it does allow some of that steam to escape and prevent the boil over that you might get. The full recipe will be in the description box, but there you go. That's our ground meat pot pie. Today's craft is some Valentine decor. I had this frame, again, trying to use up all these things I've got saved for craft projects, and I began by painting it. I wasn't sure at first I did a very light coat because I thought I might leave it that way and then I decided to go with the complete white but this stain from this frame kept bleeding through and it almost gave it a pink tone and so I gave it multiple coats of my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white to try and cover that bleed through up. And I did finally, I think I put five coats on there and finally got it pretty much covered. There was just a slight pink hue to it, which was okay for this craft. I had this little truck plaque that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I don't know about you all, but our Dollar Tree prices have increased from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five, which I guess given inflation and the rising cost of everything nowadays, it was bound to happen sooner or later. I took some of the lightweight spackling that I had, also from Dollar Tree, and filled in the little holes on the truck. And then I decided, I, I was thinking about painting it. And I started out, uh, I thought, you know what, rather than painting it, maybe I could use some colored Sharpies that I had. And I had a couple of colors of pink and red, and of course a black Sharpie. So that's what I did. I started out and I did the majority of the decor type or accent pieces on the truck with my Sharpies. And then I actually did go back and give a light coat of the main body of the truck, um, the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Uh, and, and I did a very light coat so that woodish um, kind of shows through a little bit. But all in all, it did give it kind of a muted look to the truck with the hearts and the hearts on the hubcaps being the you know primary focus that really stood out.
hot glue to glue the truck to the frame. And then I took this little love sign, also from Dollar Tree, and gave the entire thing a coating of my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I even went over the metal portion there and it took paint very well. The most challenging part of this was getting in the nooks and crannies between the letters. Um, I don't know if you guys have trouble doing that sometimes, just getting the brush to even fit in there and get that completely coated, but just keep working at it and be generous with your paint and you can usually get it done. Let me know in the comments what techniques have worked well for you. Next, I took Mod Podge and did a coating of Mod Podge on where the metal part of the letters were. And once I had done that, I sprinkled it with a pink glitter that I had. I did one letter at a time because I wanted to make sure and get it as evenly coated as possible and not let it dry out before I could get to the glitter part. So I just did one letter at a time. I did go back and touch up a couple of areas that just didn't seem to get much glitter on them, but it was, it was a pretty easy task to do that. Next I used some of my Gorilla Wood Glue and Hot Glue and adhered the love sign to the corner of my picture frame. And that's all there is to this little piece of Valentine decor. It's time for an adult beverage, and today I'm going to enjoy a Long Island cooler. I'm partial to Long Island iced teas, and I thought this might be a good variation of it. The recipe will be in the description box, but I started out with some tropical fruit rum. I added tequila, vodka, triple sec, and kinky blue. The juice I used was pineapple juice. After everything is in your shaker, you want to shake it well till it's well mixed and you'll pour it over ice in a cocktail glass. The only thing left now is to enjoy our Long Island Cooler. Well, folks, that's it for another. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee. Make it a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.